Uh, thanks, James. So today I will be talking about uh, improved metric distortion for deterministic social choice rules. And the paper is a joint work with my advisor, Kamesh Munagala. So uh, let's first introduce social choice rules. So uh, we have. So uh, we have C, and C is a set of N candidates. And we have V, and V is a set of M voters. And uh, each voter, V submits a permutation, which indicates her preference on the M candidates, N candidates. And a social choice rule looks at uh, all the permutations that the voters submitted. And uh, the social choice rule will select the best candidate based on the permutations. And uh, let's look at an example. So uh, there are three voters, and uh, there are three candidates, uh, those three sports. So uh, the three people want to uh, play some sports during the weekend. And uh, there are three candidates. So they may play soccer, they may play basketball, or they may play table tennis. And uh, each voter uh, will submit a permutation. So for example, uh, the first voter may think uh, the best option is to play soccer, and the second best option is to play basketball, and uh, the worst option is to play table tennis. And uh, for the second voter, he may think that uh, it's best to play table tennis, and second best to play soccer, and uh, the least best to play basketball. So uh, the social choice rule will look at all the permutations, and uh, it will output a single candidate, say uh, they will play table tennis in the weekend. And uh, there's a utilitarian view of the social choice rules. So uh, we assume there are cardinal utilities underlying the ordinal preferences. So there are numbers. And a typical objective is to maximize the sum of utilities of the voters. And uh, in 2016, Prokachia and Rosenstein showed, uh, de defined the notion of distortion of social choice rules. And it's defined as the worst case ratio between the objective value that the, the rule achieves and the optimal one. And the worst case is over all the cardinal preferences uh, that are consistent with the given ordinal preferences. So, so the, the ranking is the same. And uh, the, the bad news is it has been established that uh, for many common rules, the, the distortion is unbounded. And uh, for any social choice rule, even if it's randomized, it still has a distortion of uh, on the order of square root of n. So uh, to bypass that difficulties, in 2015, um, Anshulovich and, all, and, and others defined this metric distortion model, where we assume all the voters and candidates lie in the same metric space, uh, and we don't know the metric space. So uh, the cost of a voter is her distance to the chosen candidate. Uh, and uh, a metric space is, uh, we, we have a distance function that is positive definite, uh, it's symmetric, and it, is, uh, and it satisfies the triangle inequality. So uh, here is the formal definition of metric distortion. So the metric distortion of a social choice rule F is uh, the worst case over all the preference permutations sigma and all the consistent metric spaces. And uh, we define SAD to be the social cost, the sum of cost of choosing the candidate A under the metric D. So the numerator is the social cost for the social choice row F for the input sigma and the metric space D. And the numerator is the, the best social cost for uh, all the candidates, the, the best social cost. And uh, in that paper, uh, Anshlevich and others showed that for the class of deterministic social choice rows, the optimal metric distortion uh, is between three and five. And uh, in our work, we improved the upper bound from five to 4.236. So uh, to warm up, we, we uh, look at an example that shows the lower bound of three. 
So in this example, there are two candidates and two voters. Uh, the first voter thinks uh, candidate A is better than B. The second voter thinks candidate B is better than A. So uh, because it's symmetric, uh, we can assume that A is chosen by a deterministic social choice rule. So uh, the, the bad case is uh, A is chosen, but uh, the voter one is nearly indifferent between A and B, but uh, voter two likes B a lot better than A. So in that case, choosing A has a social cost of about three. So it's the distance between one and A plus the distance between two and A. And choosing B has a social cost of about one. So that, uh, that is the distance between B and two plus the distance between B and one. Uh, and to, uh, to uh, illustrate the results, let's define the tournament graphs. So given some voting profiles, we can draw a graph like this. Uh, it's a directed graph where the vertices are the candidates. And we draw an edge from A to B. If there are more people who think A is better than B than uh, the number of people who think B is better than A. So for example, in this, uh, in this example, two people think A is better than B, and only one people think B is better than A. So uh, we draw an edge from A to B. Uh, and in a tournament graph, there is, uh, there is exactly one edge between each pair of vertices. So it's either from A to B or from B to A. And uh, here's an observation that in a tournament graph, there is always a vertex U such that for any other vertex V, either there's an edge from U to V or there's some other W so that there's an edge from U to W and there's an edge from W to V. Uh, or in other words, uh, in any tournament graph, there's a vertex that can reach any other vertex in two steps, in one or two steps. And uh, here's a classical proof that we can take the vertex with the greatest altitude to be U. And we prove a contradiction. So suppose uh, if there's some V that, uh, that, that doesn't satisfy the two uh, conditions here, then for any edge UW, there is also an edge VW. Or otherwise, there will be a path UWV. So uh, the condition two would be contradicted. So for any UW, there's also a VW. Uh, and additionally, there's also an edge from V to U. Uh, it's because there's a condition one. So we know uh, the odd degree of V is actually greater than the odd degree of U. And that contradicts with our assumption that U has the largest odd degree. And uh, we define the collection of su uh, all such vertices U to be the uncovered set of a given voting profile. And by the proof uh, we gave earlier, we know the uncovered set is always non empty. And uh, the old upper bound of five is like this. So in any tournament graph, there's a vertex U such that for any other V, there's an edge, uh, either there's an edge UV, in which case, choosing U guarantees at most three times the cost of choosing V. Or there is another vertex W so that there is a path UWV, in which case choosing U guarantees at most five times the cost of choosing V. So uh, we conclude that choosing any vertex in the uncovered set will guarantee a distortion of at most five. And in particular, the Copeland rule which selects the candidate that has the largest odd degree in the tournament graph uh, is, is in the uncovered set, so it guarantees a distortion of side. Now, uh, to improve the bound, uh, we introduce this uh, weighted tournament graphs. So uh, it's like this. Uh, it's still a, a directed graph, and the vertices are candidates. and um, there's always an edge from A to B. 
and the weight is the fraction of voters who thinks A is better than B. So for example, here, uh, because two thirds of the people who thinks A is better than B, we, uh, we assign two thirds weight to the edge AB. And um, we generalize the notion of weighted uncovered set. So fix a constant lambda greater than half. And in a weighted tournament graph, there's always a vertex U such that for any other vertex V, in uh, either the edge UV has weight of at least one minus lambda, or there is another vertex W such that the first edge from U to W has weight of at least one minus lambda, and the second edge from W to V has weight of at least lambda. So uh, when lambda is half, the notion is just the unweighted uncovered set. Uh, we call this thing the lambda weighted uncovered set. And we can show the weighted uncovered set is also non empty. So uh, here is a proof. Uh, we still prove a contradiction. Assume there's no such U. So uh, choosing the first candidate is not good because there is some second candidate that violating the conditions. So we know um, the weight from x1 to x2 is less than one minus lambda, or, or otherwise the first condition will be violated. And uh, choosing the second candidate is also not good because there is some third candidate that violating the conditions. So um, we have this edge from the second candidate to the third candidate. We know the weight is less than one minus lambda. And so on, so we got a cycle like this. And then uh, we write this AK to be the weight of the edge from X1 to XK. We know A2 is less than one minus lambda, and that is less than lambda. And the last one, AK, is greater than lambda. It's because uh, the weight from XK to X1 is less than one minus lambda. So, um, we, we look at the sequence A2, A3 to AK. It jumps from below lambda to above lambda. So there must be some place that uh, AJ minus one is at most lambda. Well, AJ is greater than lambda. But in that case, this XJ cannot cover XJ minus one because we can go from XJ minus one to X1, then to XJ. So uh, the first edge XJ minus one, X1, has weight of at least one minus lambda. And the second edge from x1 to xj has weight of at least lambda. So, uh, okay, so there is a contradiction here. We know uh, uh, the j's candidate can't cover the j minus one's candidate. And uh, we can actually show setting this lambda to the golden ratio will improve the distortion to uh, two plus square root five. So uh, that's our main result. And uh, next, we may think from, uh, we want to close the gap. So uh, the previous class of rows cannot beat this two plus square root five. Uh, and we may want to get a better upper bound or lower bound. So we introduce another class of rows that, uh, that is called the matching uncovered. So uh, just for definitions, we write PVX to be the set of candidates that voter V likes at least as much as X. And QVX to be the set of candidates that voter V likes at most as much as X. Uh, and for any voting profile, we can draw a bipartite graph like this. So uh, the vertices are the voters. And uh, the graph is called GAB. Then the, the left hand side are P voter B. Uh, and that denotes, uh, for example, P1B is the uh, candidates that voter one likes at least as much as B. And on, uh, on the right hand side, the sets are QIA. And we draw an edge if the intersection of the two sets are, uh, is non empty. And uh, for example, in this graph, we know there's a perfect matching here. And 
uh, we can show if there is a perfect matching in the bipedal graph, then the cost of choosing A is at most three times the cost of choosing B. And uh, we define the notion of matching uncovered set, which uh, consists of those candidates, so that any other, uh, for any other candidate B, GAB has the perfect matching. And uh, we conjecture that the matching uncovered set is not empty. And if the conjecture is true, then we know selecting anything in the matching uncovered set will guarantee a distortion of three. And uh, equivalently, we can uh, write the conjecture like this. So let's see the set of candidates be x1 to xn. And we conjecture that at least one of the following bipartite graphs, g x1, x2, g x2, x3, and so on to g x n x1 has a perfect matching. Uh, but unfortunately, we cannot show whether it's true or false. Uh, we can show it holds when the number of candidates plus the number of voters is at most 14. It's verified by experiment. And we can show it holds when the, uh, the weighted tournament graph is cyclically symmetric. Okay, so uh, that's our result. And uh, let me introduce some related work. So uh, there is also the class of randomized social choice rules. So uh, instead of uh, always outputting a certain candidate, we may randomly output uh, a set of candidates. Uh, we may ran randomly output from a set of candidates. So uh, in that case, we also know a lower bound of two. So there's also two voters and two candidates. Voter one thinks A is better than B, and voter two thinks B is better than A. And the best thing one can do is to uh, choose A with probability of half, choose B with probability of half. And the upper bound here is three by random dictatorship. So we randomly pick a voter and output the favorite candidate of hers. Uh, so in this setting, there's still a gap between two and three. And also we can consider other problems in the metric distortion framework. For example, um, we can consider the minimum weight matching problem. So uh, each vertex will output the ranking of uh, its distance to all the other vertices. And we look at the rankings and try to output a mean weight bipartite or general matching. So, uh, that's also a reasonable problem. Uh, that's all, thanks.